seemed like there were a few times where you guys got a little bit late out of the huddle. It's a home game. I know you had to burn a timeout a little bit there. A couple of um, times where you, you know, maybe had to get the snap off just before zero. Can you take us into maybe some of the challenges, what was going on there? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, in those situations, you're just trying to make sure you're, you're in the right play. Um, you know, and you're, you've got, uh, you've got what you need out there. So I think that's one of those where we just put, I got to put our on us ourselves, making sure we're getting, um, getting the personnel of the guys quick enough and, and, uh, um, getting the play in quick enough to make sure that we got enough time to operate on the line of scrimmage and, and maximize the amount of time and, uh, have a good tempo in and out of the huddle. I know you, um, a lot of coaches, um, you know, script everything that's happening, you know, what's going to happen. But early on, it seemed like you're really using a lot of different personnel, different running backs shuttling in. Now, can you tell, tell us what kind of went into that thought process to to make sure that you guys were kind of shuttling personnel in on that first drive so much? Yeah, I think uh, part, part of it is one, you know, it, it's good to, to mix things up and continually to try to keep a defense off balance for one and and um, uh, give them some different looks and do some different things and, and, and to kind of see what, uh, what their plan is on, on some things as well. So, um, you know, and then potentially show some things and, and, uh, and, and give some different looks. So I think that's part of that, uh, for one. And then two, um, especially with the, the running back situation, we've got three guys that, that we feel really comfortable with and, and we feel great about. So, um, th- those, all three of those guys have, uh, have done a really good job for us and, um, feel good about whenever they're in. So uh, that that was just kind of one of those things based off of those those different situations and those plays we liked. Uh, we happen to have those guys in on those plays. So I think that was that was part of that reason as well for for those guys. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey Ken, um, I was wondering now that it's four games in, just kind of what you've seen out of Trent Sherfield so far as he's gotten a little more involved. Yeah, no, Trent's been great. Um, you know, he, he really came in from week one and has, has worked incredibly hard to put himself in position to help, help us on offense. Um, you know, knowing, knowing uh, not only his position, but multiple positions so he can move around, uh, be a plug and play guy, and, and whether it's inside, outside, X or Z. Um, so that's been huge for us. And then just as his ability to run routes um, and the speed in which he can do it at uh, is, is, is a, is a big plus for us. He gives us a, a dimension of a, of a route runner with, with speed to go vertical and, and do different things. So he's been great. Um, he's a big part of, of I think, what we do. Um, and I think uh, we've got a really good room there of, of multiple guys who, who help us win games. It seemed from an outside perspective, like he and Josh built chemistry kind of quickly. I was curious your perspective on that, if, if that seemed right, and if so, maybe what led to it. Uh, I think so. I think, you know, one of the main things that leads to it is, you know, he's, he's very detailed in kind of what he does and, and how he goes about running routes and, and being in the spots that, that he needs to be in. So I think Josh built that comfort level with them early on. And, and um, uh, you know, whenever guys go out and, and make plays and, and get open and catch the ball, I think that earns that trust. And um, Trent's been able to do that since he got here. Um, and then on a different note, Steph's 55 yard touchdown. I'm sure that's exactly how you drew it up the whole way. What did you make kind of watching that play unfold in real time? One, I think uh, it started up front, great protection up front uh, to give them enough time to, to run that route. And, and I thought great anticipation and throw by, by Josh, but at the end of the day, like that's a, that's a great example of what Steph is and what he brings to the, the team and, and, uh, and who he is. Uh, he ran a great route, created separation. Um, and then, you know, just the strength to break a couple tackles right there. So, I mean, that was a huge play by Steph, um, you know, and, and just one that, that, I mean, not a lot of guys I think can do, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's what makes him a, a special football player in this league and, and why he's, uh, he is who he is. And, um, uh, we're, uh, very obviously excited with the trajectory we're on as an offense, but at the same time, I think, uh, he's an integral part to that. Awesome. Thanks. Hey, Ken, I kind of want to focus on the second half offense because the first half you guys, you know, the second quarter opened up kind of the lead at halftime, but how difficult is it when you are rolling on offense and then you go into halftime and you have to regroup and then recapture that momentum, especially when Miami comes out and, and scores that opening drive? Yeah, I think, you know, that's, that's just part of the game. You know, it's uh it's every week you got to go in and make your adjustments and, um, you know, make sure you're, you're coming out in the second half, 
uh, with a plan that you feel comfortable with, um, whether it was the same type of plan that you had going in the first half or whether you got to make adjustments. So um, felt like coming out that, uh, that we were, we were in a good spot to continue to, to be aggressive against a team like that. You can't, can't really sit back and just, you know, uh, uh, hope to, to keep a lead. You got, you got to keep, you know, keep attacking and keep, uh, playing, uh, playing your football, you know, and, and keep, uh, uh, come out like the game zero zero at the end of the day. And, uh, defense did a great job in the second half. And, uh, we were able to do some things, uh, and create some opportunities for us. But, uh, you know, obviously, you know, when you go in at halftime, you want to make sure you're coming out with, uh, with whatever adjustments need to get made and, and come out with a, a plan to put the guys in position. And then for Dalton Kincaid yesterday, had a th- couple catches, but a lot of them resulted in a first down or getting mm-hmm. near the first down marker. Is that kind of what you want to see from him is finding those, those spots underneath to, to keep moving the chains? Well, I think, uh, I think obviously that's, that's big for us. Anytime, you know, anytime you could stay out of, third and two, third and one, you know, because of that effort is, is big. So I thought Dalton did a great job of that on, on a few occasions, you know, to, to stay out of second and short, to stay out of third and third, third down scenarios by, you know, that effort and just ability to make plays uh, and generate first down. So those things are always big when you can do that. And I think Dalton's done a great job of that. Uh, obviously, whenever his opportunities have arisen um, and uh, he's done a really good job for us as a, as a guy, uh, to create matchups with and, and do some different things with. And I think, you know, we'll just continue to uh, hopefully develop and, and, and expand that role as much as possible. Uh, and, you know, not only Dalton, but uh, fortunately we've got, we've got a pretty deep group there with, with Dawson and, and the other guys in that room and uh, Reggie and, and uh, Q Morris. So we feel good about that rotation. And then the, they cut those guys all complement our receiving core uh, extremely well. So we've got a lot of guys that I think you've got to account for, at the end of the day. And, um, and, and I think that helps open everything else up. Hey, Ken, I just wanted to ask you about the offensive line and just in particular over the last couple of weeks, what have you seen from them that is maybe given Josh a more comfortability back there and, and how they're helping this offense produce in the way they've been over the past couple of weeks? Oh, that's a great question. I think they've, they've done a really good job up front. Uh, starts, you know, it starts there. Uh, at the end of the day, you get in this league, you got to be able to um, play solid ball and, and be effective up front. Uh, teams, you know, I mean, it's it's just with the pass rushes you see now, and um, you know, teams creating a focus of of getting after the quarterback, and whether it's with the four down or pressure packages and, and those different things. So, um, being able to play up front is going to be a, a critical factor in terms of the success of offense. So. They've done a great job up there. Um, uh, we're really excited of what, about how one they protected, but then two, how we've been able to run the football and be physical, um, create movement, create lanes, and, and get our backs into the second level and and let them do some things uh, uh, from that standpoint. So, been really excited uh, with those guys. Um, obviously, two new faces in a guard this year, and and uh, they've really acclimated themselves well to. One, what we do uh, from a technique standpoint, but then what they bring from a physicality standpoint, um, you know, and then Dion's playing at a, a really high level as is Mitch and Spence has done, you know, continue to improve and get better and better. Um, you know, he's a young player that uh, will just hopefully keep growing and growing and, and becoming better. So uh, long answer, hopefully <laughs> short, but uh, really excited about, about those guys. And um the good thing is they just got to continue to gel together and continue to grow together as a, as a unit. And uh, uh, hopefully we can keep expanding on what we're doing up front there. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ken, you'll be coaching in your first game in London this week. So I wanted to ask you just about what it's like to kind of take your operation over there for part of the week and the excitement level of getting to play in front of a, a different type of fan base that continues to grow in Europe. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely an exciting opportunity to go over there and, and play. You know, right right now, honestly, I've, I haven't been able to get too much thought into it. You know, I just try to worry about uh, today and tomorrow to put uh, a game plan together that we can go out and execute at a high level. So, um, you know, right now, it's uh, that's kind of the focus. But uh, definitely excited to go over there and uh, um, have the opportunity to, to to play over there in a great environment, in a, a great situation. And when I was – I was playing, I was, uh, uh, we played in Mexico city, uh, first game in Mexico city. And so 
anytime you can play in those environments, those are, those are a lot of fun. Um, but for us, you know, obviously that's all, that's all well and good, but our, our focus is, this is, this is an important game for us, you know, and this, uh, uh extremely tough team that we're playing. So we gotta be ready to play. It's not, uh, at the end of the day, it's, you know, as much as you'd love uh, to go over there on a vacation, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a business trip and we gotta be ready to roll against a really tough opponent. Thanks, Ken. Sure. Hey, Ken, um, we talked about it last week with, with play action pass, um, but what, what has made um, that so effective, you know, off, off play fake the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the way we've been able to, to do it and um, obviously the way we're running the ball, it, it creates some effectiveness for us. And, and uh, it, I think it's something that, that he's been good at, you know, and it's uh, um, something that he's been effective at throughout his career. It's just, uh, maybe we're, we're, you know, creating more opportunities for him to do it this year than, than we have in the past. So, um, excited about that dimension that it brings to us, um, because now we're, we're not as, uh, one dimensional, hopefully from under center. Um, and it creates opportunities for us to, whether it's to get the ball out quick type game or get the ball downfield type game, uh, create some, some different looks for defense that, uh, that hopefully they have to, to hopefully they have to, to plan for and depend, uh, defend. Uh, at the same time, you know, knowing that we still have the ability to to drop back, mix tempos, and and do some different things uh, throughout throughout our offense. So our biggest thing is we don't want to be one dimensional in anything we do. You know, we we want to make sure we're we're attacking a defense in in uh, in different ways without it uh, it adding up to where we're um, mass. You know, got a lot of different things, but we're not good at anything. So we'll continue to to grow um, in those different aspects with Josh under center but at the same time, making sure that, that we're balanced in how we're doing things. Um, and successful overall in play action, even more successful under center. Could you just detail um, what, what, you know, what, what's more, what is more advantageous about playing under center in, in the play action game? Well, I think the, um, the big thing is your ability to be multiple from under there, your ability, you know, with the back right behind you, you got, you know, runs either direction. You've got, um, the ability to, to throw some quick game out of uh, from under center. You got still got the ability to release guys and give vertical, and then you got the ability to um, give different uh, protection variations, whether it's maxing things up or um, or chipping guys and doing some different things from from that aspect. So I think the multiplicity in which you're able to operate and and do some different things from some of those under center looks uh, again creates uh, um, creates hopefully some issues for the defense. And uh, and some different things that they have to plan for instead. Of Josh just always being obviously in the gun and and you know knowing where hey the backs on one side or the other and you know and, and all those different things. All right, thank you. Sure.